Hi guys, welcome to Sugar MD. Today we are talking about metformin. Does metformin cause kidney damage? Is metformin bad for your kidneys? Let's talk about it right now. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I'm an endocrinologist and a diabetes specialist. Today we are talking about the effect of metformin on kidneys. Now, we have a lot of uh, videos about metformin like here, like there, like this one. You name it. We have a lot of videos about metformin, but specifically, I don't think I've ever answered the question, does metformin kill your kidneys? And I get this question a lot in my clinic, and people actually come to me and say, Doc, I want you to stop my metformin because it kills my kidneys. I'm like, who said that? They're like, I don't know. Somebody said it. I heard it. Well, we don't go by she said it, he said it, right? So we go by signs. Now, does metformin really cause kidney damage? It does not directly cause kidney damage. But what happens when you have a kidney failure? Now, most people cannot uh, differentiate the chicken from the egg, right? So is it the chicken or the egg? People's kidney function go down for many reasons, right? And if they're on metformin, which I would say 90% of diabetics are almost on metformin, you know, most of the time, at least in the beginning. And then they blame metformin for causing the kidney damage. Well, that's not typically the case, but the reason we stop metformin when the kidney function goes below a certain level is because metformin is cleared by the kidneys. Like any drug that is cleared by the kidney, your doctor should adjust the dose or stop the medication depending on the kidney function since it is clear from the kidney. Because in excessive doses, if metformin is not clear by your body, there is something called lactic acidosis, which can actually kill you. Now, thankfully, it is very, very rare. That's why FDA said, you know what? You know, it's so rare that we will allow metformin to be in use, to be used by the patients until GFR is below 30. Kidney function, we call this GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Now, your physician may not be comfortable if your metformin is below, say, uh, 50, you know, uh, 60 sometimes, they will stop the metformin. But the, what happens when you stop metformin is if you are not doing something else and just stopping just somebody's medication and they're still sending, sending home, they're going to come back with a very high blood sugar. Yeah, most of them will be. So you have to do something differently. You know, you can you can use another medication. You can use another supplement. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors are not very open-minded when it comes to supplements because they don't study supplements at school. So when they don't know it, they say no to it, you know. But uh, you can do your own research. And, you know, you, if you don't want to take metformin, you can take, you know, berberine, super berberine, dehydroberberine. Uh, there's a lot lot of metformin uh, equivalent, I would say, not necessarily pharmaceutically, but at least the efficacy wise or the end result wise is similar. And you don't necessarily have to use a, a supplement or a medication that works like metformin. You can use just something else that can j get the job done, which is lowering your blood sugar, right? So we have a lot of supplements uh, on our website. You can check that at sugarmds.com or sugarmds.com, which you may find useful. But back to the topic, guys, metformin does not kill your kidneys. But if you're not comfortable with it because of all the side effects that you're experiencing because of metformin, and again, we talked about metformin side effects, uh, you know, on this video here, make sure you check that video out because it's more complicated comprehensive but if you're tired of the side effects or if you don't think it's helping you anymore it is okay to change it but don't blame the poor drug to for your kidney damage because then if you don't know what really is causing your kidney damage and you blame metformin what if it is something else what if it is your high blood pressure what if it is your like uncontrolled cholesterol what if it is some another systemic disorder killing your kidneys like you know you need to really be open-minded and just stop blaming things only on one thing but I'm okay with stopping or reducing metformin as the kidney function goes down just to protect you from the possible lactic acidosis that happens with metformin. Again, uh, you know, sometimes I just reduce the metformin dose when the GFR goes below 60, and I stop the metformin if the GFR goes below 30 for sure. But again, you know, we work with the patients, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, it is okay to stop it. It's not like the only medication in the market. There are a lot of ways to do it. And if you are dedicated to change your lifestyle and do some 
from exercise and dieting and change your lifestyle entirely, that is probably the best thing you can do. It may or may not be enough in every case. Every case is different, but I think you have options as long as you know your options and you're educated, and that's why you're watching this channel, I think you have the odds to your favor. Guys, make sure you like this video, share, and give a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one. Guys, vitamin C is found in berries, citrus fruits, green vegetables. Well, the great sources among the, the green vegetables are asparagus, avocados, the beets, blackcurrants, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cantaloupe, collards, dulls, grapefruit, kale, lemons, mangoes, mustard greens, onions, oranges, papayas, green peas, sweet peppers, persimmons, pineapple, radishes, spinach, strawberries, tomatoes, turnip greens. Guys, or the girls, or the ladies. One of my uh, viewers said, You always say guys, that's so annoying. When I say guys, I mean all of you. You know, guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen. Just to make it informal. So, but the bottom line is, yeah, so uh, most people go for, when I say vitamin C, they go for orange juice. Well, freshly squid orange juice is okay, but when you have diabetes, that can really hit you hard. So you have to be very careful about the amount you're getting. So, but as I said, the vitamin C is so common in so many other foods. Foods, you don't necessarily need to drink that orange juice plus we talked about this before we don't want to do processed oranges or uh, I mean orange juices at all so a few comments about the vitamin C you know a lot of people use vitamin C to help prevent the common colds but the studies again and again shows that actually it doesn't really help much with the preventing the colds but if you have the cold and having vitamin C extra can help reduce the number of days that you're having cold and as you know when you have cold your diabetes goes off the chart you know anytime you're sick your body's under stress when you're under stress your body squeezes a lot of cortisol when you squeeze a lot of cortisol any physical or mental stress you are in trouble your blood sugar will be high and anytime you're under stress your body needs more antioxidants and there you go vitamin c helps there it can help your let's say your common cold instead of seven days it can reduce it down to five days which is if you think about it two days of not having a common cold is pretty good deal now who are are really vitamin C deficient or more likely? Well, the guys and girls who drink alcohol and the smokers are more likely than anyone else. If you are on analgesics, like uh, painkillers, if you are on 
antidepressants, anticoagulants, contraceptives, the steroids, all these things can deplete your vitamin C levels and that as a result if you are on these agents you may want to use more vitamin C. So what are the caution? Well the caution is this when you overdo the vitamin C, especially more than 2000 milligrams, actually it can turn it against you and do the exact opposite. Instead of becoming an antioxidant, it creates oxidative damage. Again, I always talk about the moderation, moderation, moderation. You know, if you are deficient, you're in trouble. If you overdo it, you're in trouble. So don't overdo it. So never ever exceed more than 500 milligrams. Now, what is another problem with vitamin C? Well, if you are taking more than 500 milligrams of vitamin C, especially glucose sensor users, you know, those sensors that you don't have to do finger sticks and stuff, they are affected from excess of vitamin C more than 500 milligrams a day tend to cause high blood sugar readings uh, falsely high so actually you may be low but it may actually show high so that may not be great for you because you know you want to know when you're low uh, and it may cause uh, under treatment of low blood sugars or if you're taking aspirin for example for cardiovascular risk reduction and if you take vitamin C together it can cause a lot of stomach irritation can cause ulcers reflux and problems like that which you may already have so you may want to make sure that if you're on aspirin at least take vitamin C in low dose or just eat take it from the food instead of taking a supplement which can cause stomach irritation if you're pregnant you don't want to take too much vitamin C because you may cause your baby to become dependent on vitamin C if you're taking excessive vitamin C during pregnancy then your baby may end up with problems like scurvy due to dependence on excessive vitamin C. And avoid using chewable vitamin C because they can cause en enamel problems like gum line problems. So that's another thing that I have to caution you about. But the bottom line overall having around 100 milligrams of vitamin C especially from the foods we discussed uh, definitely helps if you are not a vegetable and fruit person and, and you're a steak and potato type of guy or girl you may want to take some uh, some vitamin C esterified vitamin C appears to be a little bit better but guys uh, vitamin C needs to be taken in moderation not too much less than 500 milligram a day in total and that can help lower uh, your blood sugars a little bit as well not drastically by any means but if you're especially deficient can help your insulin resistance and we talked about the other benefits and risks so guys i hope that video helps remember to give a thumbs up and share and we'll see you in the next video